so good evening to everyone today i am going to talk about coexistence and inherent interconnectedness in nature from scientific perspective so basically i am going to talk about perspectives of science over the period of time so this is what i am going to discuss with you in fact i am going to share with you so basically i will share different world views in the domain of science in different time period so what was the world view before 15th century what was the world view of science during 16th to 19th century and what is the world view of science in this 20th century this all i am going to share with you and i have shown here a pendulum pendulum means before 15th century there was a world view of organic world view of mother earth world view of interdependence interconnectedness people lived in small communities in a related manner and they experienced nature in terms of personal relationships so i can say that before 15th century there was a holistic world view which was prevalent around the world so basically primarily i will focus here the world view during this 16th to 19th century and the present world view of this 21st century 20th century so i am not going to dis Uh, discuss any technical issues of uh, the science domain i will share with you only the perspective of science during this time period so if i talk uh, this 16 to 19th century so there was a world view of world view of this whole existence as a machine so the whole universe is considered as a machine and this mechanic mechanistic conception of reality became the basis of the world view very soon and copernicus galileo newton like this many scientists propagated this world view during that era but during 20th century the world view is changing again world view is shifting so now the world view which is coming out of these scientific explorations is the world view of interconnectedness world view of interrelationships world view of unifying reality these types of world views are emerging from the modern science especially from the dimension of quantum physics so i will share all these development which has happened uh, in this scientific domain and how this world view are coming and what is the basis of this world view this i am going to discuss with you all so let's start starting with 16 to 19th century so we can start with the explanation of galileo so basically galileo was passionate about mathematical language he generally consider generally considered as the father of the modern science because he propagated that if you want to understand this universe you have this universe can be understood with only mathematical languages so mathematics and science both were synonym for the galileo and he was passionate to describe nature mathematically analytically rationally so he postulated that we should restrict ourselves to study only those property of material like shape numbers movements those properties which can be quantified which can be understood in a quantified manner and other properties like color taste smell ethics values spirituality all these are subjective so he excluded from the domain of science 
so psychiatrist ali lay at that era he said that galileo's approach offered us a dead world a world without values quality soul consciousness spirit etc so i can say galileo started giving a perspective of a mechanical world in this 16th to 19th century then bacon was another scientist uh, he was in the same era as galileo and he was much affected by the galileo's rationality galileo's mathematical formulations and under the influence of his mathematical analysis bacon boldly attacked traditional schools of thoughts and developed a veritable passion for scientific experimentation and this time the organic view of nature was replaced by metaphor of the world as a machine so people started considering this world as a machine and the goal of science very soon became knowledge knowledge means the information gained from experiments mathematical formulas and rationality etc and the whole science started to dominate and control the nature and in this manner the ancient concept of earth which was as nurturing mother was radically transformed in bacon's writing and scientific revolution proceeded to replace the organic view of nature with the metaphor of the world as a machine so this was the beginning of the world view from organic to mechanic from interconnected to individual so this is how the shifting of world view started with these scientists and this world view this metaphor this world as a machine this metaphor was strongly propagated by the two towering figures of the 17th century descartes and newton and descartes believed that the key to the universe was its mathematical structures and he believed that this universe can be understood this universe and all the activities happening in the universe can be understood through mathematical formulas mathematical structures and he derived analytical methods so what was the method according to this descartes he doubts everything he started doubting everything he can manage to doubt and all traditional knowledge the impressions of his senses and even the fact that he has a body until he reaches on things he cannot doubt the existence of himself as a thinker so this was approached by descartes which was propagated in this scientific community so he proposed that you start doubting everything till you get a thing which you cannot doubt in this manner a reductionist approach was propagated during this centuries by descartes and he arrives and his one statement is very famous i think and therefore i exist so when he start doubting everything 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 then he reached up to this statement i think therefore i exist so he concluded that i exist because i am thinking this was the you know his conclusion so in this manner descartes start uh, started propagating this analytical method in scientific community and very soon this method was adopted by most of the scientists of uh, those time not only scientist in fact generally people started thinking like this right? through rationality through logic through doubting etc so this method basically it consists in breaking up thoughts and problems into pieces and in arranging these in their logical order so according to descartes whatever problem you have you start breaking up into a smaller problem into a smaller problem till you get the smallest problem then you start thinking about it then arrange this smaller part in analytical order if it is giving consistency then you will find out a solution this was the method propagated by the descartes and it is known as the 
greatest contribution in science science probably the, the greatest contribution in science and very soon it has became an essential characteristic of modern science in fact nowadays also the modern science in fact academics are influenced through this approach mm -hmm. but over emphasis on the cartesian method has led to the fragmentation that is characteristic of both our general thinking and our academic discipline also and very soon it became this attitude became widespread in those that era so the belief that all aspects of complex phenomena can be understood by reducing them to their smallest constituents parts this was the methodology that was used to scientific community and if i conclude how does card perceive this nature living organism and human then i can say to descart the material was the material universe was a machine and nature work work according to mechanical laws and everything in material world could be explained in terms of the arrangement and movement of its part this is how descartes perceived this nature and about living organism descartes extended his mechanistic world view of matter to living organism so according to him plants and animals were considered simply as a machines and in fact human body is also a machine according to him and many parts are working under some laws and running this machine this was the perspective or world view of descartes and descartes also extended his world view uh, towards this biological functions of the body as i said according to him living organisms were nothing but automata where independent parts are working together and creating some functionality this was his perspective about the organism and based on the whole view of nature he proposed human being as a two independent and separate realms that of mind or res cogitans and that of matter res extensa so according to descartes human being is a Uh, can see human being consisting of two things two independent things one is the mind it means the thinking thing and other is the material thing that is extended so this is how the descartes perceived the whole nature human being and activities which are happening in the universe then newton developed a comprehensive mathematical formulations and he worked all the works like Kepler, Bacon, Galileo. Now he compiled all the works and gave a very strong, rationally, rationally mathematical formulations about this universe. So, according to Newtonian worldview, God created in the beginning the material particles, the forces between them, the fundamental laws of motion, and in this manner the whole universe was set in motion, and it has continued to run ever since. like a machine governed by immutable laws so newton believed that initially god created all the things but the forces which are working among units are working mechanically independently so earth is rotating sun is sun exist other planets exist they don't have any relationship with each other but they are working under some laws and later newtons try to bring out those laws like gravitation force etc so the new though, though the newtonian world view was based on laws that ultimately were of divine origin the physical phenomena themselves were not thought to be divine in any sense that's why in subsequent centuries science made it more and more difficult to believe that there is a creator a god and in this manner the divinity the relationship disappeared from scientific world view leaving behind a spiritual vacuum that became characteristics of characteristic of mainstream of modern culture so this is how the 
perspective shifted from 15th century to 19th century. So earlier, there was a perspective of completeness, relatedness, Mother Earth, but with the entry of this scientist, the perspective shifted towards independence, towards a mechanistic value. So for the scientist of the 18th and 19th century, this tremendous success of the mechanistic model confirmed their belief that the universe was indeed a huge mechanical system running according to the Newtonian laws of motion and that Newton's mechanics was the ultimate theory of natural phenomena. So this is how the worldview shifted from organic to mechanical. Now, I am going to talk about this 20th century developments. Parts to hold. So I will uh, briefly share theory of relativity, quantum theory, developments in biological sciences, the morphogenetic field theory, the holographic perceptions of the universe. And all these are concluding that there is an interconnectedness, interrelatedness. And interconnectedness not only at surface level, in fact, at a deeper level, at the level of quantum, there is an intimate relationship between atoms, you know, between quantum, and so on. So I will give a brief uh, sharing about this theory. And again, I am not going to discuss it in a technical manner. I am going to share it in a philosophical manner. So theory of relativity. So as Newton propagated the mechanistic worldview, according to Newton, uh, the whole universe was working. Uh, as an independent part where there are many units working independently. No, but no. Einstein opposed no. it. No. Einstein opposed it. So Einstein proposed theory of relativity. Einstein said that we cannot see anything independently. There is a relativity. So indirectly, Einstein wanted to say that things are interconnected. You cannot see anything in independently. You have to see the things in the relation of other. So that's how the relation, uh, theory of relativity brought out by uh, Einstein. So after deep exploration of this uh, relativity, this relation among all parts of this universe, Einstein quoted that a human being is a part of a whole called by the as universe, a part limited in time and space. So Einstein believed that we are a part of a whole. We are not independent uh, identity. He experiences himself, his thoughts and feelings as something separated from the rest. If we think that our feeling and thoughts are separated from the rest, according to Einstein, it is a kind of optical delusion of our consciousness. So it is a, like a prison for us, restricting us to our personal desires and to affection for a few persons nearest to us. But once we come out of this prison, prison, then we can see ourselves widening our circle of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. So this was experienced by the uh, Einstein. Then if we say, uh, if we discuss this quantum theory, so in quantum theory, uh, the results which are coming from this quantum theory is object and observer, both are connected. So we cannot observe any object independently. So there was a very uh, famous experiment, double slit experiments, wave and particle, sometimes a particle behaves like a particle and sometimes it behaves as a waves. So quantum theory reveals, in fact, uh, Fridge of Capra, a physicist, he says that whether the quantum will behave as a particle or as a wave, it depends on the state of observer. 
if observer want to see as a particle then it behaves as a particle and if observer wants to see it as a wave then it behaves as a wave so there is a deep interconnectivity there is a interconnectedness between object and observer at deeper level so this does in reality nature does not show any isolated building blocks but rather appears as a complicated web of relations between various parts of a unified whole so with uh, this dimension of quantum theory there were many laws of newton which appeared working on the surface level but that laws do not work at quantum level so when this quantum theory is evolved this theory is giving us impression of interconnectedness coexistence and there is an experiment of uh, non locality effect a very famous experiment in uh, quantum theory so what is this experiment this experiment says if you uh, put one particle at a equilibrium state uh, put a atom in a equilibrium state and you take a few particles of this and keep it at a distance and when you do any change in particle a then particle b will also show some changes it doesn't matter how much distance is between particle a and b whatever whatever has happened in a b also reflects in that manner to ensure the equilibrium state so this experiment shows that particles are connected so intimately that effect on a can be seen as a reflection effect on b this is how they are connected and keeping this experiment as a in the base david boham uh, write a book wholeness and implicate order and central theme of this book is unbroken wholeness of the totality of existence it means according to boham there are two reality one is implicate and other is explicate so explicate me explicate means whatever uh, we can see at the surface level like mountain trees etc so sometimes it may appear to us that mountains are disconnected and you know, mountain and rivers are disconnected but at a deeper deeper level the whole universe is interconnected and this interconnectedness is coming out at the surface level that is reflecting in an inexplicate order and this is also interconnected due to our state of consciousness we may not be able to see its interconnectedness but at deeper level and at the surface level both are interconnected with each other so boham uh, criticized the fragmentary view of existence that was propagated during the 16th to 19th century and boham asserts that notion that all these fragments are separate in existence if it is evidently an illusion and this illusion cannot do other than lead to endless conflicts and confusion so in the present context he said if we are not able to come out of this illusion of separateness individualness then it will lead to endless conflicts and confusions in fact the attempt to live according to the notion that the fragments are really separate is what has led to the growing series of extremely urgent crisis that is confronting us today so he concluded that if we understand this interconnectedness this wholeness then we can live a life which is which will be harmonious and happy then i will share some scientific evidences of this biological sciences so in the last few decades a number of phenomena has have come to light which are forcing biologists to see the things in wholeness and interconnectedness for example it is now very well established that 98% of 10 to the power 28 atoms of a typical human body are replaced annually in interaction with the environment it means our body is in relation with environment continuously and there is a exchange between environment and our body we 
may not be able to see it, but it is happening. And simple calculations reveal that each breath you breathe must contain a quadrillion 10 gig power 15 atoms breathed by the rest of the mankind within the past few weeks. It means whatever breath you are taking, inhaling airs, are actually coming from the other's breath. It means physically we are also interconnected. Again, cells work not for themselves, but for the integrity of the tissues of which they are a part. So this is very interesting things. If we see our body, not even a single cell is working for himself. The cell is working for the integrity of the whole. Any part of a living organism is willing to die in order to protect that larger ent entity. And according to Chopra, who is biologist, all living organisms display behavior patterns that favor the whole over the interest of the individual parts. It means if required, a cell is ready to die for the interest of the whole body. This is happening in the body. And very interestingly, a human body consists of some million billion cells, far more than stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Of this cell population, 600 billion are dying and the same number are generating every day. Over 10 million cells per second. The average skin cell lives only for about two weeks. Bone cells are renewed every three months. And every 90 seconds, millions of antibodies are synthesized, each from about 1200 amino acids and so on, many things. So many activities, billion trillions of cells are working together to sustain this body. It is like a team. Suppose a cell at your toe, something has happened to that cell and this happening is now known to every cell of the body. This kind of information is taking place among cells, among quantum, among particles in the whole universe. Instant information flow. That's why every unit of this universe knows what is happening in other units. And they coordinate with each other in a coexistential manner to ensure coexistence of this whole existence. This is how the existence is working. And this is the value which is coming from this biological sciences also. Then morphogenetic field theory, again, a very important, interesting theory. So morphogenetic field represents a field of consciousness specific to a given species. It means the more the members of a species exhibit a certain trait or vibrate to a certain consciousness, the easier it becomes for all the other members of that species to entertain with that trait or consciousness. It is a very interesting thing, very interesting theory. And a very famous experiment revealed this uh, field at the 100th monkey effect. So I am going to try to explain this experiment. So this, uh, man Rupert Sheldrake. So he showed this uh, morphogenetic field through this experiment, which is called as 100th monkey effect. So he went to a forest and uh, there was monkeys. There were monkeys in the forest. And this uh, Sheldrake, he gave a potato to a monkey. But potato was very dirty due to clay and sand there. So the monkey could not eat it as it was dirty, filled with mud and sand, etc. Then next day, he again gave a uh, potato, but monkey could not eat it due to dirt. And one day, one of those monkeys, a child baby monkey came and he was trying to clean this potato and uh, accidentally this potato fell down in the river and once it fell down in the river uh, he again uh, put this uh, potato and it was cl clean because of the water and once it was clean he ate it happily then 
this person, Rupert Sheldrake, again uh, continued with a potato uh, among those monkeys. And gradually, after 99 monkey, the 100 monkey did the same thing as the first monkey did itself. It means when 99th monkey did the same thing, it means they put in the river, then clean the potato, then ate. And after 99th monkey, the 100th monkey knows that how to eat potato. And he started eating potato in this manner. And interestingly, another forest where this experiment did not happen, all monkeys knows how to eat that dirty potato. And in this manner, this Rupert Sheldrake shows that when a certain species do certain behavior, it creates a field, morphogenetic field. And this field, due to this field, it becomes easier for others to do the same things. So for example, in the present context, for the example, our child learn technology easier, easily than us because of this morphogenetic field theory. So like my father, he was not comfortable with the technology, but I am comfortable with the technology. And I see my daughter, she is more comfortable with technology. Why it is happening? Because of this morphogenetic field. So what the scientist uh, wants to say, they want to say that this per, uh, field, morphogenetic field connects same species. It means we are an interconnected with some field, which is known as morphogenetic field. So again, is a, it is an example of interconnectedness. That's why I have discussed here. Then another interesting uh, thing, the holographic perception of the universe. And this holographic perception of the universe says that each part of this universe seems to carry information about the entire universe. Many of us must have seen the holographic images. How many of you have seen holographic images? You can raise your hands. You can find holographic images at the back of the book. Right, many of us and I have seen these holographic images. Can anybody tell me what is the speciality of this holographic image? Anyone? Can anyone tell me what is the speciality of this holographic image? Uh, I think it is a three dimensional. Right, it is three dimensional. Okay. Okay, so in addition to this, in addition to this, that it is a thin dimensional, in addition to this, there is another property of this holographic image. The property is if you cut that holographic image into pieces, every piece will show a full image. In normal 2D images, when you cut the uh, image, it will not show the whole image, it will be in a part. But this is a speciality in holographic images. Whenever you cut the holograms, each part of the hologram will show the complete picture of uh, that hologram. This is the speciality of this holographic pictures. And keeping this at the base, Michael Talbot proposed a new revolutionary theory. He proposed that every particle, every unit of this universe has information of the whole universe. So everything interpenetrates everything. And although human nature may seek to categorize and pigeonhole and subdivide, the various phenomena of the universe, all apportionments are the are of necessity. Artificial and all of nature is ultimately a seamless web. So he brought out this evolutionary approach that every atom, every unit, has the information about the whole universe. That's why there is an instant flow of information. That's why there is a, that's why if something happens at part A and this information immediately passes to part B and part B knows what is happening at part A. 
why it, why it is happening because the holographic nature of the universe and if i talk uh, referencing this consciousness because whole universe is reflecting on every particle it means the whole universe is also reflecting on me also that's why we have a potential to realize this whole universe so it is very interesting uh, a theory of this holo holographic universe and this theory gives uh, many solutions of the prevalent problems so this is a theory which is not talking about only interrelatedness in fact in addition to that this theory says that every particle has the information has the information of the whole universe interestingly so this this view again is a a uh, view of completeness view of wholeness that's why we have a put this that's why we have a curiosity to know all uh, the whole universe because of this reflections now if i conclude all this uh, scientific development so i can say that uh, before 15th century there was a world view of organ uh, organic world view of mother earth world view of interconnectedness and during this 16th to 19th century the world view changed and world view became the pure mechanistic world view through uh, through mechanist through mathematical formulas and now this 21th century 20th century again is revealing a world view of interconnectedness world view of wholeness world view of interdependence so we studied morphogenetic field theory holographic view quantum physics and biological development all these studies now shows that there is a world view of there is a need to see this world with the world view of interconnectedness in fact quantum science indicates a quasi instant correlation quasi instant means information passes instantly from one part of the universe to other part whether that system is an atom an organism or a galaxy all parts of a system of such coherence are so correlated that what happens to one part also happens to the other parts and the phenomena this phenomena cosmologist call the fine tuning of the universal constant about 3 dozen it means 36 parameters physical parameters of the universe are so precisely adjusted that together they create the highly improbable condition under which life can emerge on earth it means 36 parameters according to science are required to sustain this whole ecological system at the earth and these parameters are coexistent with each other and they are working in a fine manner in coexistential manner so if i conclude all this thing you know i am not going the going to this discuss to this ecological evidences because time is limited so if i conclude the whole uh, session so i started discussing world view i started discussing world view before 15th century then i discussed world view of during 16 to 19th century mechanistic world view then i discussed the world view of 20th century where theories are theories are coming out with wholeness interconnectedness interrelatedness this type of terms now what gaps uh, i have find out in all these theory if we are talking uh, with scientific perspective science talks about observed but not about pure observer in uhv we are talking about pure observer we are saying that if we are in a pure observer state then we can see this interrelatedness this coexistence as it is which is not being talked in scientific community number 2 science talks about definiteness somehow they are coming to the conclusion that things are definite but they are not talking about absoluteness and uhv 
throws light on the absoluteness of this universe. And again, science does not talk about this goal of human being in this existence. And UHV talks about the goal of human being in existence. So this is all from my side. Thank you very much. Yes, Didi. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, I've read a little bit on of Francis Bacon. And mm -hmm. uh, so it, there's a famous, uh, you know, uh, like uh, understanding that he says that knowledge must come from the careful observation of nature right. filtered through inductive reasoning. Right. Okay. And mm -hmm. at the same time, he also says that scientific methodology and improvement of mankind's state uh, is, uh, you know, the uh, can be uh, done when uh, we are using scientific method, which is presented. So mm -hmm. if we go back to the Aristotelian view where he implements syllogism, mm -hmm. Okay, that right. is man is immortal. So we are just talking about immortality. We don't talk about anything that is, you know, uh, towards this conscious behavior of man or, uh, you know, the coexistence, the interconnectedness. So uh, how do we, uh, you know, relate this to uh, the interconnectedness and coexistence that we are talking in nature? From a layman's perspective. Yeah, see, Didi, uh, till we understand ourselves, till we understand our consciousness, till we have contemplated all our activities, you know, it is very difficult to see, perceive the world outside. So, all these scientists started understanding the world outside without much working on them. Them means uh, their consciousness. That's why many times I have found in literature that they were also talking about God, but another another uh, perspective, they are also talking about mathematical formulas. So I have got them put mostly, mostly time confused between this divinity and this mathematical uh, region, regions. So what I think as a layman perspective, we start observing things and, and we <clears throat> start observing things from, uh, you can say, first we start the information uh, which is flowing uh, from one part to one part which we can see easily. Then we can explore ourselves. And as we will move towards this pure observer state, then it will be clear to handle all those issues which we are trying to ask. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, there is another upcoming viewpoint, you know, that is of neuro-linguistic programming, the way we train our brain, as you said, that monkey experiment. Uh, so I could relate to that, the, the way we train our brain and then it gives us a perspective to understand our conscious behavior. Uh, so yes, a lot of actually, Bhaiya, this is what is very confusing because when we mm -hmm. go through different kinds of, uh, you know, understanding, uh, so it really confuses us sometimes. But Bhaiya, I must say, a wonderful presentation, like, you know, it's uh, it really made my day well and I think uh, for everybody. So uh, I think we can take up some questions if there are. May I request the participants uh, if you wish to, you know, interact with Bhaiya. Thank you. Yeah, Gopal Babuji, Namaste. Namaste Bhaiya. Uh -huh. So, uh, two things I was just thinking. Uh, right. First one that came to my mind is that when our faculty members are teaching UHV, how much of what you have shared can be placed in the content or none of it should be placed in the content? Your view on that? Hello. Yeah, that is one question. And the second one is that, see, is the scientific 
uh, experiments looking at things directly or they are inferring from some effect that is uh, taking place through the senses, through the, uh, you know, sight, through the sound and so on, through the five senses. Or is it beyond the five senses, which uh, UHV is talking about beyond the five senses also, looking at relationship, for example, at the level of contemplation, which is not a sense organ as such. So it is beyond the senses. So this is the second thing. Is science also looking at things beyond the sens sensual information that is coming through the five senses? So these are the two questions. Uh, you can comment on them. Yeah, yeah. I can uh, answer second question very easily. Uh, what I've, whatever I have read to uh, prepare this presentation, mm, science is trying to uh, they are trying with, uh, they are trying in a rational manner to understand this universe. So whatever, whatever doesn't come in their rationality, they don't think it is a true or they don't try to assimilate it if it is not up to their rationality. So this is a problem with uh, science. They are, they observe outside events and they give one uh, mathematical formulas and then they check consistency of uh, laws in outside event. If they found they are consistent, then they say, huh, this is a theory, this is a formula, which is true. But actually, in my, uh, uh, this is my uh, view, all those uh, scientists who are studying this quantum physics you know, they are facing many challenges and they are accepting that this universe cannot be understood within the range of this uh, senses like sign, uh, sound type, touch sight smell etc so they are accepting it that rationality work up to some extent but our rationality is not enough to understand this universe so they are accepting and they are also finding new paths you know, to understand this universe. So we have to wait till they find new path. And I think UHV is giving that path. GBR. Yeah, and the first question. Uh, that... uh, please uh, tell me briefly again, what was the first question? Yeah, see when we are sharing, for example, an introductory UHV uh, FTP. Mm -hmm. Should any of this content be placed in that? Or referred uh, to in answering any questions also? I think we, have, uh, we should place these developments uh, to stud uh, in front of student. And we should also place what science is not able to see. What are the capability of scientific uh, instruments. With this context, we should place all these things and we must tell students that science can work up to here. Now you have to work on yourself. It means UHV will help you to facilitate, which UHV will facilitate you to reach up to the pure observer state. And science is working through rationality and with the combination of both as a pure observer and with rationality, we can comprehend this whole universe in completeness. This is my view. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, from my side, uh, a couple of simple things is that uh, when we are sharing some content, there is a scope uh, with which that uh, content has been developed. And if we are going out of the context of that, out of that, even in answering questions, we might be able to answer few people, but the 
by and large the larger majority will be lost so we have to be quite careful in going out of the syllabus of any you know specific uh, particular so that's why i asked if when we are doing uhv introductory then what do you do when you are doing uhv 2 what do you do when you are doing 3 what do you do so like that you know so uh, because science is after all uh, mostly focused on material phenomena and the consciousness the phenomena which has to do with consciousness is almost out of scope for uh, science at this time so whereas uhv is talking about both the consciousness as well as the material and the coexistence of these two so uh, that's why uh, you know that uh, uh, we have to temper what is uh, what is included and what is not included, even in responding to questions uh, when we are sharing any particular content. So that's my view. But that uh, after after UHV three, Bhaiya, after UHV three, yeah, all these things can be discussed. Yeah, after UHV three, I I would agree that. After UHV three, this can be discussed as a uh, input uh, for those who are keen to know about that. Because there are many uh, 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 explorations into science and mysticism. For example, Fridge of Capra's Tao of Physics is one such exploration, and he is concluding that the science of the large and the science of the small are not in harmony with each other but the uh, 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 mystic traditions the uh, the uh, hinduism buddhism taoism other three that he talks about they are approaching that in a much more holistic manner so uh, they are exploring you know that there is a, a portion of the existence that is out of their purview right now and they are trying to get into that that is and there is a there is a new book of Ridge of capra system view of life ah okay and he has i have read that a ah. very good book and he has summarized all uh, his previous study in this book okay okay okay, okay. and it is very good book uh, i'll try i'll try i'll read that because I read both of his earlier books. Uh, this, anyway, so ni nice, uh, Gopal Babaji. It is five past uh, five. If there are any other questions, we can take them and then close the session. But there are some more things to be done now. Uh, namaste, Bhaiya. Hello. Namaste, Bhaiya. Namaste, Bhaiya. Um, uh, my view is that science is a part of uh, what uh, UHV teaches, that is consciousness. So whatever uh, the revelations that the scientists have found out, which are uh, in coincidence, which are related to our UHV, must be used. So you have given... Uh, five uh, theories and out of that the last three they have got so many revolutions which can be used by us because uh, they are uh, showing the direction that the UHV also shows. For example, you are talking about a particle and wave. So when they did the experiment of uh, showing a torch light uh, onto a screen with uh, one slit back on the screen they found only one line. When two slits were made and the same torch light that was shown, the light which went through the two slits made so many waves. So interaction happened. But they kept a mechanical wave to observe that. Then they found that there were only two light lines on the screen. That means 
even though a mechanical observer is observing due to that observation the light particles behaved as two lines only there was no interaction so that shows us that when we are in our consciousness we can see things correctly so this we can make use of it you are talking about uh, the monkeys and the effect of the monkeys in the other forest even in the scientific world we have seen that uh, when in usa ford uh, made the car in germany they made volkswagen in uk they made uh, rover same way when in uh, you know hot air balloons were made in england at the same time they were made in germany and france so if one country invents or discovers something that effect also happens in the some other country without even connections so like this whatever the science finds out which are in connection with our uhv we can make use of it and the last one i want to say is like they say no there are about uh, uh, 10 uh, uh, disciples for the paramartha guru and when they were counting each other the person who was out counting he forgot himself so when a wayfarer went there he made uh, this man who was counting then they found that there were 10 disciples that shows that uh, when they were counting uh, when each one is counting he is uh, leaving himself so in uhv we are including uh, that self uh, that one which is counting that one which is see so like this uh, uh, we can make use of uh, the scientific revelations or the stories which are in coincidence with our uh thank you thank you to self evolution to scientific revolution whatever uh, what is happening today scientific revolution without self evolution this is the gap only right namaste gopal bhaiya nice to hear you you yeah, are from you after a long time and uh, bhaiya i have one question regarding this definiteness and absoluteness and we are also discussing you watch we about this definiteness of natural acceptance everything is definite things we have seen can you put some light on what how this uhv into this absoluteness bhaiya is my uh, question clear bhaiya yes yes right i am i am clear with you so absoluteness and definiteness when in uhp when we are saying absoluteness it means we are indicating a reality which is unaffected you know by any any activity happening in this universe in fact all these activities are happening in coexistence with that absoluteness so what is happening today we are observing those activities which are actually activities but we are not able to see that absoluteness in which all these activities are happening so uhv is helping us to realize that absoluteness and once we realize this absoluteness we will be able to appreciate all the activities happening in coordination with each other in the presence of this absoluteness so this science is not addressing this absoluteness so in fact einstein theory says everything is relative and in in fact today science is exploring everything in relation to other but there is a one part which is absoluteness which is which we are calling as absoluteness and it cannot be seen through any instrument or even rationality it is a issue of realization so rational rationality to realization this is a path where we have to move to so science through science we can understand 
things in rationality, but through realization, we can also see the absoluteness, which is underlying in this existence. This is my submission, Didi. Thank you, Vaya. Uh, I also believe that most of what we have discussed in a scientific way, it's all how they found and seen. There are a lot more unseen and things to be known. So thank you, Vaya. Thank you so much. Okay.